What's up and welcome to an episode of the Grindline Podcast. I am your host, Greg. You are listening to episode 169. Nice. I am here tonight with Ryan and Tyler. And uh, God, uh, today was not a fun day in Red Wings land. Uh, someone woke up. Actually, I'm not gonna even going to say someone. Octopus Thrower woke up this morning and chose violence. It didn't even start with them. That's the worst part. It kind of did. It did. Maybe the things got released at the same time. I know, was it Free Press or Detroit News that came out with an article that was saying Larkin is basically saying this is a brutal season and he's doing as great as a captain or whatever. And Nolan, Nolan tossed one out there. Nolan tossed something out there saying that if you're blaming Larkin for anything, just stop. And mm. then Octopus Thrower had to come out with something. But I want to get how you guys are doing tonight before we get into it, because tonight will be the night of defending Dylan Larkin's honor. I'm not too bad. I would say that my Twitter has never had so much activity in a 24 hour time frame. Um, it's and what's funny is I, I wasn't even tracking anything crazy being said. And we'll get to it here in a second. But other than that, I'm doing pretty good. Got some Traverse City whiskey here. I'm uh, going with the fiery. Up, this is fine background for the situation that we're currently in. So we'll see what happens here as we uh, we go along. If that changes back to happier things of Joe Lewis. Ryan so. is currently melting dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am doing well. Um, thankfully, the weather is starting to be normal here. Although yeah, I know you, you guys are getting some snow, right? So um, <clears throat> the temp's already gone up, though. Yeah, it's 45 here, and tomorrow is supposed to be in the 50s again, but we're getting rain, so I guess... How are you avoiding all the snow? You have all play- people. Yeah. Like, you should have everything. <laughs> Maybe we'll be getting it on Thursday. Hopefully not Friday, because I'm flying out to Texas on Friday, so hopefully that's Ooh, not the case. What are you going to Texas for? Going to see my aunt and going to a Kraken Stars game. Nice. That'll yeah. be cool. Yeah, that awesome. should be cool. Looking forward to the barbecue down there, for sure. Yeah. Um, and Mexican food. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. But uh, I'm doing well. Um, looking forward to discussing uh, this whole Dylan Arkin situation, which I, I actually can't believe it's real. I really can't believe really? it. Really? You can't? No, I, I, I really can't, especially with a guy that's liked the way Dylan Arkin is liked. I, I just, I don't get he it. Plays. And we'll get into it. Thing. Plays hard. Um, you know, we'll get into it. But Yeah, anyways. if you pay attention to a lot of dylan larkin reactions and sorry if you see us look up if, if you can see us on video and we're looking up we're all watching different sports games at the same time like i'm watching oh, the right, Calgary, right. I'm Chicago watching game, and uh i know tyler's watching baseball but it's the the fan base can go either way on dylan larkin so there are people that really really like dylan larkin which is 80 to 98 percent of people but there is a certain section there's a certain section of people, and I don't like to generalize, but Oof. they are normally over the age of 50. And typically on Facebook, but now they've they've infiltrated. Yeah, it's kind of leaked into Twitter. And it is the kind of people that say he's whiny, he's immature, he does takes penalties and makes the team look bad, and it's not stuff captains should do. And they apparently forget completely about the what is talked about Steve Eiserman and what he had done and just apparently how much of an asshole he was to play against and also to ref for. But it didn't it kind of so in in summary, what happened this morning was that winged uh was it uh octopus thrower? Octopus thrower, octopus thrower put out an article. And the title was something to the effect of, and because I can't find it anymore because they deleted it. The title was the exact opposite of what the actual article was, which was disappointing because... Do you have the title, Ryan? uh, Let me see if I can pull it back up. It was something like, did the Red Wings make the right choice? So the title of the article was, is Dylan Larkin as captain the right choice? So clickbait, like super clickbait article. And because it goes through and or, says, yeah, of course. The way they the right posted it to, to, to Twitter wasn't quite just the headline. They added to the Twitter, like, click. Sure. So there was more to it that made it more, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Clickbait. I mean, clickbaity, I guess. Absolutely. It is what you do when you want to get clicks is you come up with a title like that. You'll see a lot Which, of 
random hockey hockey buzz will do it a lot and it's, sites it's that i don't like to look at that's something we are used to seeing from those guys sure they they went the route of like i said like a hockey buzz or a hockey feed where they do these even detroit uh is it sports nation or whatever dsn detroit sports nation they do a lot uh, of detroit, stuff like detroit that. sports now i think it is with uh duff and no uh, different one um, but they do a lot of clickbaity oh. articles like that too, where it's just the title is is not what is in the article at all, just to get clicks. And when you start doing stuff like that, people tend to not like you <laughs> because it's not they click on it, they read it, it's not what they were expecting to read, and they get pissed off. That's what happens. So this started a complete firestorm online of where we we said that it looks like Facebook started to leak into Twitter because it was people just bashing Larkin, saying it wasn't worth it, saying that we need to take the sea off his chest and give it to Cider, what? that Iserman will have no problem. If he uh, requests too much money next season, Iserman will just trade him and won't have any issue trading him, uh, that he was only chosen as captain because he's from Michigan. There was... Uh, all sorts of terrible, terrible arguments. Even Prashant jumped on and he's like, the Red Wings are really bad and need a scapegoat. Who should it be? I think I've cracked the case. And he posted the Best expected player. goals above replacement for the Red Wings and Dylan Larkin's ahead by like a fucking five miles. And he put a red arrow. It just says, get him. Yep. But looking through all of Dylan Larkin's stuff, I don't know how you can say he's not the captain, how he doesn't deserve to be the captain. In every cat, he ticks off literally every box for captaincy. And this really pissed me off. Like, really, I did not wake up this morning thinking I was going to argue all day about why Dylan Larkin should be captain after literally everyone was asking for him to be captain. Hey, I don't think there was one person you could have asked going into the, the FUBAR season that we had last year of who should be the captain of this team because there was, what, two years running of we want Dylan Larkin as the next captain of this yep. team? Hashtag Roughly, give Larks just the two C. Years, right? huh? yep. Hashtag give Larks the C. Yeah, which we helped start, and mm -hmm. it was fantastic. Crazy. I can't think of anyone directly off the top of my head that was against it. There were some, there were some naysayers there. They, weren't, they wanted him to be older. Yeah, they, they wanted him scoring more. They wanted him doing things sure. that – He's doing right now yeah as the captain of this team and it was it, it, there there was i mean granted no there was there other options on this team absolutely not you you could maybe argue no there, there's no, no one you could no. have argued <laughs> that was more suited to take over the captaincy of this red wings roster now is it an ideal scenario no Neither was Steve, was Steve Eisenman when he gained a captaincy. They were no. literally called the Dead Wings. And Bob Duff on it's Detroit Hockey Now is what it was. He had an article just a couple days ago, or today, this morning. Yeah, I'm sorry. Today. He posted yep. it late, late last night. Move over, Dead Wings. These Red Wings are deader. They're in a re-emergence re, re of a Dead Wings era. And that's what Iserman came into. That's what Larkin is now in charge of. Is, Lar is Larkin putting up the same numbers as Steve Iserman was when he came into the league? No, but it's also a different league. He's still Completely doing different. all the things that we saw Steve Iserman do with a roster built roughly the same. Now, the, whole, the only thing we can hope for is that we're starting to get into those, you know, early 90s seasons that Iserman started to truly see success and other star players come into the roster. Granted, Salary cap wasn't existent. Things of that, the rules were far different. Things had to change a lot for Detroit. That we don't have a Scotty Bowman coming in, but that we know of. Yeah, true. That's true. That could be next. This could be in this upcoming season, especially if uh, what DMAC had to say on Woodward Sports, cool. and, um, which we can touch on that here in a little bit too. Yeah. If what he said today actually comes to fruition, we're going to see a brand new regime in charge of this team next season. But, but but I'm going back to the Larkin piece. Like everything you can compare in a way lines up to what Iserman dealt with. Now I'm not saying that Larkin is the same tier as Steve Iserman. Steve Iserman arguably is a top 10 player all time, maybe top 20. I mean, you know he's in the top 100. He's already yeah, been there. Absolutely. But you could easily say he's one of the top 10 hockey players of all time. Is Larkin going to get to that point? No. 
does he need to be at that point? No. All he has to do is continue what he, he, you know, he averaged just shy of a point per game this season. And it sucks that he's not going to get that chance. Yeah. Before we go on, we should probably break the news for people that are under a rock that Dylan Larkin had successful, successful core muscle surgery and will miss eight to 10 weeks, which is the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. And he clearly did this so that he could end his season with 69 points. That is why he did it. So everyone could look at it and go, nice. nice. Dylan Larkin ends the season with 69 points. But continue, Ryan. Yeah. No, Dylan Larkin it's a out perfect for number for a guy known as Mr. Hockey Butt. Um, Hockey Butt. End the season on. But no, it's just like everything that you look at, it just screams an Iserman type rebuild for this team. And go figure. He's the one that's overseeing this and is in charge of it. Mm-hmm. Iserman or McCarty, going back to some of the things that he said today, even made that point abundantly clear. Mm-hmm. Believe in, as he says it, the wiser plan. Like all the rumors and bullshit that we started seeing this morning, Darren was able to relate it directly to what he saw with Eisenman for several years up until those mid 90s, where all the talk, rumors, bullshit that were going on, Eisenman's getting traded to Ottawa. Trade Eisenman. He's not, he's not the right person to lead this team into the, in the promised land. Blah, 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 blah. Now, all that same bullshit is rearing its ugly head for Dylan Larkin, and it's unwarranted. Yeah, maybe you could have made had that argument last season in the whole fucky COVID season, but even still, like, you, you, I don't understand how. I don't understand why people like to come at players that give their all, that block shots, that kill penalties, that score goals, that pass the puck, that put their heart and soul into a team. I, I, I've never understood that. Now, criticism, sure. But stuff like this is just, it's not necessary. I'm sorry, it's not necessary. It was never necessary with Eisenman back in the days, and it's not necessary now. Oh, well, Dylan we said Larkin, who are we, Buffalo? Right. right. Dylan Larkin is, I would say, a little below a world-class player. He is right up there. And maybe a couple of years from now, he will be a world-class player or top 10 player in the NHL, right? But right now, he's he's a fringe world-class player. So at the end of the day, it's like we're going to sit here and people are going to nitpick and, and say what they want to say. But, like, he is the cornerstone of this franchise. It's, it, it's not even close. Who else do you get to name captain? I saw someone say – Franz Nielsen, I know that was tongue in cheek and just joking. No, I, I'm pretty sure but that was straight sarcasm. That's, an that's, that's, that's what I just said. But yeah. it, it just it doesn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. It, it, why? Who else are you going to make captain of this team? Mo Sider, a rookie? No. Just so you can run him out of town. Just right. so that you can get pissed off when they lose, and Mo Sider's got the C. So you're saying get rid of the C from Sider. He can't lead the team. So here's now, the thing. Here's the thing uh, that I want to say. They just, people just will never be happy. It goes back to the same situation, and I brought this up in the group chat. It goes back to the same situation of people blaming the goaltender when the defense is Swiss cheese. Those same people are the same people that are shitting on Dylan Larkin and saying he shouldn't be the captain and blah, blah, blah. Give me a break, man. He had a great season this year, and it's unfortunate he's not going to be able to finish it. And I, I would imagine if they were in the playoff hunt, he'd be playing. That would be my guess. Yep. But since there's nothing left to play for, and they're probably better off losing games in general, that, you know, there's there's no point of him risking it. Yep. So they get the surgery, and, and we'll see you next year. And that's kind of where he's at right now. Well, it's the same people, Tyler, that are like, what Mike Babcock did to Johan Franzen is not a big deal. It's those same kind of people. It's the same kind of people that want Babcock back to coach this team. I've seen countless of those people that say, bring him back. He deserves a a second chance. What he did wasn't too bad. All that. Look, I was a Mike Babcock guy back in the day when he were, when he left for Toronto, I was, I was devastated. I'm like, you know what? This is him seeing the writing on the wall. This is him seeing Zetterberg and Datsuk aging. This is him seeing that there's not much youth uh, in the pipeline. And this is a way for him to leave. But I mean, yeah, you you see, uh, he's an asshole. People, th- and and you know, there's less and less coaches like that in the NHL now. 
And, yep. um, you know, John Tortorella, it seems like he he could still be back in the league at some point. But even he has changed. He's not going out there sure. challenging every reporter and, and playing an old style of hockey. Even he has has been a guy that has adjusted. So if you're not willing to adjust, then you're not going to coach in this league now. I mean, you, you can pretty much see that um, going forward. So I don't know. I mean, to me, it, this, those people are the people – that saw the same situation with Eisenman and they're just trying to continue to compare Eisenman and Larkin where they're not the same player. No. Yeah, sure. They came in at young ages and they became the a young player, captain. But it's a, very, the, the situation it's a similar situation. Almost. Sure. It's a similar situation, but at the end of the day, it's like you have to, they're going through a rebuild right now. They're getting closer to the end of the rebuild, right? I mean, they're not there yet, but with some, additions to this team next year there's no reason why they shouldn't be a fringe playoff team so i, I don't know where people get this idea that that oh it's way worse than it was when i and obviously i wasn't old enough to remember <clears throat> but at the end of the day it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me how you can compare the two situations and, oh and this one is much worse like no it's not much worse it's maybe the same or a little bit better because you have a mo cider and you have a yeah. lucas raymond so and you have the pipeline yep. yeah and the pipeline and i mean this we talked about this before and i'm sure we'll talk about the coaching change that yep. is probably inevitable this is probably the number one job that's going to be available oh absolutely summer. so uh, th those people can just take it and shove it really i mean no, i, I want to piggyback on your like fringe world-class player point there now, I, I kind of want to look at his – since he's coming to the league statistically. We got stats. I've, I've got just for this season. So, I went on NHL.com just to do a quick look. I mean, this is the simple basic filtering that I, I jumped in here. I filtered by point per game. I think I did a minimum of 40 games played just to have a, some type of threshold there to look at. There are only 48 players in the NHL that are scoring more per game than Dylan Larkin. You can the argue top this. Top 50 scorer. At, at forward, well, let me rephrase that. Forward. Okay. Top, top 50 scoring forward in the NHL. And so then center, he's probably in top on, 25%. I got <laughs> but wait, I got there's there. more. Of those 48, 21 of them are centers. And of that group, only four of those guys, not this is not including Larkin, are on non-playoff teams. Interesting. The majority of the players were in a playoff position or fighting for a wild card spot. But hey, to Ryan, say, huh? Dylan Larkin's not a number one center. Remember, hmm, he's not. A, he's not a true number one center. Remember, I would say other than Larkin in the Red Wings, there's only 16 teams represented out of those 48 players, or I'm sorry, the 21 players. Yeah, I think people so, forget that Dylan Larkin is still developing. Like this is not yeah. this is not he's, the end he's of his now hitting the stride of his freaking prime. Yeah, but, but you want to know the names that are ahead of Larkin? I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run through those center names that were on on that list that are ahead you of go, Larkin. You go, Ryan. Some of those are gonna be a little bit awkward or odd to see because they're having standout seasons and, and the situation that they're in is fantastic. But it's not gonna be surprising to see that who's ahead of him at all. No, it, I'm going to be going in order from number one on down. Number one, actually, you know what? I'll go. I'll go backwards because it'll be more fun that way. Kairou, Tavares, Pavelski, Zabenejed, Kuznetsov, Lindholm, Aho, Shifley, Reinhardt, Duchesne, Thomas, Stank Stamkos, Hughes, Miller, Crosby, Kadri, Barkov, Drysital, McKinnon, Matthews. McDavid. Those are the only centers in this league putting up more points per game than Dylan Larkin. So you know what that you tells know me? know what? That's a pretty damn good list to be a part of. And you know a lot that? of those guys play together. Yep. You know what that tells me, Ryan? He's a number one center. He's an elite center <laughs> in the hockey NHL. He is a top line NHL center. Yes. And that, that kind correct. of blows the the doors off the whole mm -hmm. argument of if you put him on it, he's only, he's a second or third line center on any cup contending team. Mm -mm. And and to add to it, he's two way. Yes, elite center. Because someone tried to tell me today 
that Larkin doesn't play defense. I had a guy tell me that he's he doesn't he got got Bertuzzi and Cider playing every game. Larkin just decides when he wants to show up every other game or something. You didn't like that. you didn't hear like Bertrand on that list, did you? No, he was actually just behind him. But yeah. he's also what thirty seven. So I'm gonna I'll cut I'll cut Bergeron some slack here. I, I'm not I'm not saying anything about Bergeron. I'm just saying that he's not though. Where's Where's Jonathan Taves on that list? Is Bergeron listed as a center? Taves is yeah Taves. No, he's yeah. So I, so going back to the whole Larkin doesn't play defense thing. If we look at Jay Fresh's <laughs> player card of this season, Larkin has an EV offense of ninety five and an EV defense of sixty eight for the, just this season. But if you look at the last two seasons combined, his combined war is at a 93% with an EV offense of 95 and an EV defense of 89. That's a two-way center. Like, if you've ever seen one, that's a two-way center. What's crazy is they just now started putting him on the PK, which really is fucking baffling to me. For how good he is at stripping pucks? How good he is at stripping pucks, how good he is at pressuring guys on, on the puck, how good he is at winning battles to get the puck out of the zone. Like, all the things are there when he's at five on five, that why hasn't he been on the PK? Now, yeah. granted, injuries have taken their toll. Like, they just lost Sonny, so he was out. So Larkin got slotted in a little bit more. Fabry was out. Suter wasn't really doing that too hot for a little bit of a stretch there. So you kind of had no choice. But, again, look at all those other captains that we've had thrown at our way this year, or this just today of who he's being compared to. Zetterberg, Iserman. Okay, I'm going to stop the list right there. But your top, your main two yeah. guys, what they do? Play two way games of the ice, yeah, full game, and there and there's a reason that there's a thing called the shift for Henrik Zetterberg because he played his ass off on defense and won the con Smythe because of it, and that's what you can get from Dylan Larkin. Now, isn't it amazing that you go from Eisenman to Zetterberg and Datsuk to Larkin, all? forwards and center sorry centers that are two way and their defensive game was almost better than what they brought offensively and it's because they were all trained they were all told that in order to make it in the league you need to work on your defensive game that's the thing that Iserman did as soon yeah, as he got he here to. he said Larkin work on your defense the offense will come and you saw that this year work on your defense become a great defensive player it's the same thing Scotty Bowman told Steve Iserman to do Stamkos well, has become a good center. defender. Yeah, sure. It's, I mean, you've seen that change with Eisenman since he's come in, and, and you've seen that come down through Blashill as well. Is everything they've talked about, especially with Zadina, who's been the main scapegoat this season, their two hundred foot game has to improve. That's been the main like talking point that Eisenman's brought forth since coming over, what and D-Mac that's made say? its way through Blashill. It's making its way down into the team, and you've seen that. Especially that was one of the main mm-hmm. things. Eisman mentioned with I, with Larkin. What did, what did I say in the group? Defense chat? wins cups. Yep. Next what did I say lot. in the group chat today? I don't What's know. I'm not in it. it. There's not one player that's at fault for this team. No. 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 This this group is effort. a team effort. This team does not defend well as a team, and so at that point in time. You can see why this team has given up the amount of goals that they've given up this year. They don't defend well from start to finish, from Dylan Larkin to Danny DeKaiser and everybody in between. They don't defend it. I don't want to use. Don't defend well. No, it's it's every time it it comes up for this team defense to even think that you can call out Larkin. Now, does that is it saying that he is? Free of fault. I think mean, oh, kind of like no. we said, no. But to say that he doesn't do it, that he doesn't play a full game, that he takes nights off, you're a liar. Yep. And I'm going to tell you right now, you, you're, you're a liar. I had someone try to tell me that today. Now, it just it blew, blows my mind. Like the fact that I'm, for one, trying to support Larkin. So I'm getting called a fanboy. And, huh? That you have to support Larkin. Well, that it I also have my to mind. support and really defend. So I'm getting I'm getting called a fanboy because I'm you know calling somebody out on their bullshit for providing zero fact to show that he's actually not a top tier center, that he's not playing defense, that he's you know the 20 games a minute. Apparently, that's just a made up thing they throw into Hockey Reference or NHL.com. Um, you know, point per game. That's whatever. Is it's it, it, it's infuriating. There, there's 
it, I mean, what I do appreciate about it is it's that it's, it's a vocal minority, as is the case with pretty much anything in life these days yep. that have made themselves heard. And this one just so happened to strike the right nerves, but we have the right people there to, to you know, fight back. Yeah, refute the arguments that they're trying to make. And one the of same those people that use plus minus as a stat to prove that a player is good or bad. Yeah, but I mean, it's it has its has has its good points. I mean, even McCarty used that talking about some of the guys today. Looking at Mark Stahl, like you look at the types of players that you have on your team in your leadership roles, and no matter how bad they are, like Mark Stahl, I guess I haven't had to recheck it. Is apparently still a plus two, even though they've got one of still one of the worst defenses in hockey. Like that's actually quite the feat in its own. But like it's, I, I appreciate how many more people stepped up to show their support for Larkin, especially on a day like today where he was announced that he's done for the year and it's only several games that are remaining. Yep. But then you had Darren on Woodward sports really laying into those people. And that, I think that was kind of the icing on the cake. And, but just to see the fan support step up or something, as you mentioned earlier, Greg, I know you were going hard today. So was I had, we had the group chat with Ethan, Greg, or Ethan, Brandon, and uh, Pete, and Nolan, we were freaking sharing tweets of the stupidity that was going on. That's who actually got me fired up, so fuck you, Brandon, for that one. Is that he He texted first thing saying people wanted Larkin traded, that he wasn't actually supposed to be the captain. That's what I saw first, I, and that's what sparked me to send my tweet, which then apparently uh, that with the octopus thrower thing, that ignited just the fucking realm if we go back to stats, I have Evolving oh. Hockey's Garin War pulled up for the whole team. Dylan Larkin is fourth on the team in Gar uh, at 10.5 goals above replacement. He's also top 60 in the league. The top, the three above him are Mark Stahl, which, like I said, has been a goddamn offensive anomaly this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler Bertuzzi and Mo Sider. Shocker. For war, Dylan Larkin, let's see. I don't know to do sort of by war. I bet you it's the same list. Same list for war. Uh, Mo Sider is at a 2.2 wins above replacement. Bertuzzi's at a 2.2. Mark Stahl's at a 1.9, and Larkin's at 1.8. The next person is Nemesnikov, who is at a 1. Nemesnikov was also four, uh, fifth in Gar. Oh, no, fourth in Gar. No, fifth. Fifth in Gar at a 5.5. So that's like a dramatic drop from a 10.5 to a 5.5. But no, Dylan Larkin just he doesn't pull his own weight. Just not not at all. No, not. Just terrible captain. Yeah, him, so him and Bert are the only two wings, I think, that are in the top one hundred for for forward gar in the league. That's that's crazy. Well, people it, but want him traded. It's the problem. No, he's the problem, right? Lar- uh, Iserman will get rid of him next week. He's not Iserman's player. Iserman, I think people no. also forget that like the guy who we all call the captain. Named Dylan Larkin captain. He the didn't captain. have to do that. You, he could have went with three alternates until he found the person that he wanted to be captain. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to. We went year without a captain. Yeah. Zetterberg. So here's another piece. Years. That, two years, right? Two, two seasons. Yeah. yeah. Here's another thing that I always go back to is on NHL.com in October of 2021, there was an article written called Dylan Larkin, Henrik Zetterberg, and what it means to be Red Wings captain. And I'm just going to read this little part from Zetterberg. It says, to be honest, Zetterberg told the Detroit News, uh, DetroitRedWings.com, even though he didn't have the C on his jersey, he's been the captain for a few years. So Zetterberg made an addition to the table. He's talking about a weight table that he was given. He put the number 71 on it with the C next to it. When he dropped it off at Larkin's house, he told him that only captains could have this table. Uh, oh, it's a massage table. Sorry, I thought it was a weight table. Whatever. It says he says, "Well, I'm not the captain." Zetterberg recalled Larkin saying, "He says, well, you're going to be the next captain." Like, what do you? What more do you fucking want? You're gonna go tell Zetterberg that he's wrong. You're gonna go to Z's house and be like, "Sorry, Larkin didn't deserve to be captain, and you were wrong." You're gonna go tell Iserman that he was wrong in making the decision of naming Larkin captain. You're gonna you go tell, tell Rod all Wall, Larkin, yeah, Lidstrom, those guys, all Larkin's all teammates. Yeah. All his teammates like to see that. say that he's the leader in the locker room, that Robbie Fabry had said it at one point last season, that Larks is the leader. When like, when Larks is talking, the guys listen. Mm-hmm. Even when Zetterberg was there, I remember they did that mic'd up thing, and uh, Zetterberg, was, I believe, was still on the team. Kroner uh, was still on the team. And um, 
I remember Larkin like telling Tatar what to do and and telling Mike Green what to do. And Mike Green was way older than him. And Mike Green mm-hmm. was listening to him. And I think Double A was still on the team at that point in time. And Double A was listen- like this guy has been a leader he since he's come like in. He he's learned from Henrik Zetterberg. Do you remember the World Championships? When Datsuk, you know, said he wasn't coming back and and everything like that, and there was that handshake between the U.S. and Russia, and and Larkin and Zetterberg or D- Larkin and Datsuk had the picture together. It was like a passing of the torch almost, where he knew Zetterberg was going to be gone, and you know he was already out the door. So uh, he's gotten all the experience that he's needed. They, he had the playoff run the first year, and I mean, yeah, he's gone through a lot of shit here recently. But the team is on the up and coming, and there's nobody else that should be captain on this team. I'm sorry, there's nobody else. And not if right we, now, not right now, and not in the future, because Dylan Larkin is a leader. Dylan Larkin works hard, and Dylan Larkin is a player that a coach would love to have and love to clone. By the way, they say that about the the best players. That you yeah. know, um, Babcock said that about Zetterberg and Datsu. We would love to have, you know, 18 of these guys. One of them on every line. Yeah. So stop with this garbage of, oh, we need to trade him. We need to do this. He's not worth this. He's not. Oh, and just wait until the contract extension comes down this summer. People, oh, are, oh. those people are going to be losing That's gonna be their fight. marbles when that happens. So, oh, no. I yeah, was, get ready for it. forward to that. Get no, ready I, for it. He's going to make nine and a half million dollars a year. I guarantee. And that I might think be eight on the and a half to nine. Yeah. I think it'll be a below nine. Yeah. You think? Yeah, I think it'll be eight and a half to nine on an eight year contract. Now, people are going to complain about the term. They're going to complain about the money, but they are 26. Most, yeah, they're most definitely going to complain about you're the tell, term. If you're going to tell me you're going to give Dylan Larkin a 26 and eight year deal, you're going to give him a five year deal and, and walk him to free agency at 32 <laughs> no. years old? No. Absolutely not. No. You're you going to lock him, him up finish, for eight years. You want him to finish his career with the winged wheel, with a captaincy. And hopefully a Stanley Cup at some Cause, point. Because guess what? That eight year deal, if it's at eight and a half million, like you're thinking, Greg, yep, that turns into a steal if he Absolutely. continues on his pro- projection or progression, I should say. Also, and the cap keeps going up. That's going to be it's going up a million next year. They got a lot of money falling off on the cap for the dead money right now with with Nielsen and the sword, as we've talked about. That'll be a fantastic deal four years into it. Also, people don't realize the fact that. Stamkos, when he came into the league, um, you know, and Hedman and those guys, they, yeah, they went to the conference finals the one year, and then they had a couple of lean years where they weren't that no. good. Oh, and by the way, when Tampa won their Stanley, finally won their Stanley Cup with Eisenman's group, Stamkos was not the best player on the team anymore. The best player on the team was Nikita Kucherov for Braden Point. Yeah, yep. so well, you, that goes back to you still Stamkos need valuable vets. You need vets. Yeah, he and, also needs secondary players to have sure. that to for one be healthy. Now, granted, talk about the Kucherov piece, and you know, is cap, it, now here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I'll ask you guys this, and you know, whoever listens to this can respond as well. When the Wings win a Stanley Cup under this regime, because they will, is Dylan Larkin going to be the best player on the team? I will say no. 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 Nope. Yeah. No. No. But it'll be it will probably be, be one of the top three or four players on the team still. He won't that's the thing though he, he won't need to be. No. He's still going to be the that's leader. Another, that's that's another point to that is even that's what McCarty mm-hmm. mentioned today. I know I'm going to sound like I'm playing with D-Max balls here but for this team to be to that point you're referring to Tyler, he s- says that he needs to be the number 2 center. Well, speaking of balls Ryan, I think that's the oh. perfect segue. You're welcome. To talk about our new sponsor, Manscaped. So support for the Grindline Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. You get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the promo code GRINDLINE at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls, Ryan. Give or take a few. Give or take a few because there are some people that have extra and some people that are missing some. So, Oh, ooh, squirrels. But, but everyone needs to keep them nice and trim. Now, they did send us these packages. 
um, for our packages. And it's a, it's a world of difference. It is. We got the, the trimmer. We got the weed whacker, which is the nose and ear hair trimmer. That thing is fantastic. It is awesome. It doesn't hurt. Have you ever tried trimming your nose hair and it just like be ripped out? I've I've had like attachments for regular like hair trimmers. Yeah. And it always destroys my nose. It rips the hair out. You cry. It's a terrible tie. Your eyes water a bit. It's like, uh, have you ever eaten wasabi? It's about the same thing. And, and yeah, Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Actually. They also give you uh, what is called ball deodorant, which is a nice moisturizing kind of lotion that Mm -hmm. doesn't have a crazy perfumey smell, which is awesome. And you get a toner, uh, a crop reviver toner. You also get the performance boxers. And I wore these and they're like some of the most comfortable boxers I have ever worn in my life. And you also get a sweet bag to hold everything in. I mean, it's I have been looking for a new trimmer for a while now. What had happened was uh, my my one that I was using. Apparently, you have to join some crazy exclusive waiting list to get fucking razor head replacements for it. What? Yeah, I uh, like to do this Amazon subscribe and save thing and I hit subscribe and I was supposed to get one two months ago and it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and canceled. But now (laughs) I have the lawnmower 4.0 and it has been fantastic so far. I love the 3.0 to see the 4.0 arrive in the mail was like Christmas morning with the LED light on it. So you know exactly where you're trying not to cut yourself. Yeah, if you ever, if you've ever uh, I know yourself, everyone's super interested on on you know the patterns that we probably can <laughs> perform with these things. But a nice little unicorn or lightning bolt. <laughs> no, seriously, it's it's uh, even if you're not even trying to just get rid of it all, like it works great on the chest, even yeah. on the chest area. Your back, have your have yep, your significant yep. other do uh, shave your back with it? Because well, here, here's the fun one. Not, I don't have a hairy back, so I can't say that I, I know how that goes. Um, so yeah but no anyways what's neat though is that it's not metal on metal i think that's the big thing it's like a plastic a super hard plastic on the metal it is uh ceramic is this it it is ceramic yes replaceable ceramic i didn't do my homework Mm. no it's it's highly recommended by myself i would say if you need to take care of some stuff that's definitely the way to go and i'm not just being you know convinced to say that because it's a sponsor it really does fucking work great and it's fantastic no i mean i've used their stuff even before sponsorship if you're not even looking for a body wash is even good yeah they've got body wash they've got beard and face wash they've got Mm -hmm. like we said the deodorant all that kind of stuff spritzer is fantastic the toner refresh yeah Yeah. but i mean this so this new one the the four lawnmower 4.0 does have an led spotlight on it so you see exactly where you're going the worst feeling in the world is to cut your balls um they will bleed forever uh there is no stopping it i've done it on more than one occasion and it is not fun uh but with this there is you have such a significant less chance of nicking yourself and i mean just overall phenomenal product so go to manscape.com use promo code grindline get 20 percent off your order worth it and the more people that use our promo code the better stuff we will get so please go there use the code get your stuff Get your balls trimmed. It'll be a fantastic time. I promise. I promise you. You will not have a better time trimming your balls than you will with Manscaped. But I think that is where we're going to leave that. We lost Tyler as we were talking about balls. We keep losing Tyler. Tyler's dropping like balls. I, th- is what I, he's think, doing. His, <laughs> I think his headset died and now he can't reconnect to audio. Now he's just awkwardly staring at the screen. Beautiful. Well, we are going to continue, Ryan. Well, Tyler figures out his technical difficulties. I'll just put up that Simpsons picture of like the technical difficulties of like, was it uh, itchy and scratchy where he's got like he's electrocuting himself with the wires? Um, but yeah, DMAC, I think we're going back because we were talking about DMAC balls. Um, we're going back to DMAC, who absolutely went off on yes. the fan base. Well, Not he just started the base, it on Twitter. Were, but, yeah. Yeah. He started on Twitter before the 11 o'clock Woodward uh, Big D Energy. And then he, they went through their first hour because I was getting ex- antsy and excited. Yep. But then they mentioned at the start that it would be an hour before they actually got into it. And when they got into the Wings and Larkin, he didn't hold back. And it was, I, I got a few of the quotes here. Um, to say that 
he was pissed off, I think would be an understatement. Um, and like one of the things you fall bat, Ryan, he had a baseball, baseball bat, bat that he, he was, he was calling people, people with. out to come <laughs> fight him. And he said he would do it all for charity as well, which I think was probably the Absolutely. highlight of it all. Oh, God, please. Someone and I think as he it. was, try- as he was going off, he actually knocked over his bobblehead, even though I, I don't think he broke it, but it sure looked like it was close. But like what we, we mentioned earlier though, I, I grabbed a few tweet or uh, quotes here as he was going through and just, Fucking going, oh, you son of a bitch, you got one. It's the vintage Mac Bobble. Look at that CCM bucket. Oh, uh, why, why you gotta rub that in, man? The vintage McCarty bobblehead that I got at a thrift store for five dollars. I still want the new one, but anyway, so what I mentioned earlier, like Darren, Darren in his rant early on, he goes, This is the same garbage talk my first couple of years about Eiserman yep. getting, getting traded to Ottawa. Yeah, he's like, yep. the big thing that he hit on is, quote, history repeats itself. And as he was, I'm, I'm going to kind of, it's going to be spotty quotes here, but you'll get the big picture of what the hell he's referring to. It's when he's referring to Larkin, he goes, you lead by example and you get everyone to buy in. He said, drop the Larkin garbage because you're talking out your rear end. It, 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 you literally are because everything that you look at and I'll do the follow on quote here is that in Iserman's eyes, Blaschel doesn't, Blaschel being there doesn't set this team back which means he's not holding Larkin back or setting him back. These guys are doing what they have to do to get better. And the guy that's going to lead that charge is the one that said they said, what, one year of playoff experience and the rest of just straight hell. No no better person than that. It's it's not – you don't need the guy to be putting up all the points and all the goals. You want him driving offense. You want him playing defense. All the things that we just touched on. Here's another quote that from from the rant from uh, from Darren. You want your 50 goal guy? That's Raymond. That's Verona. It's not Dylan Larkin. Dylan Larkin's not going to go out. There. He might get you 30, as we saw. That's if you're getting 30 goals and 30 assists or 40 assists, 50 assists, which is really the ideal scenario from Dylan Larkin. It's a win because then he followed that quote up about who your 50 goal guy is. Is did Stevie ever score 50 when he won a cup? No, bro. Nope. He didn't because he changed his game. He turned it into a thing about it's all about the team. You got to play both ends of the ice. Now, thank you, Scotty Bowman, for bringing that realization to, to, to life because that's what kind of led the charge there. But the point of it is, like some of these people are saying, he's not out there. He's not the, even the most, scoring the most points. He's not scoring goals all the time. He shouldn't be. Nope. Is he helping the team be win? More often than not, regardless of the status of this roster, that answer is yes. And to say that he's not, you're a fucking liar. Yep, I agree. Hey, look, Tyler fixed the Tyler. issue. Tyler didn't have to talk about balls the entire time he had technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, I missed, you missed it. it. You missed it. You have oh. anything to add? Yeah, I got my Manscaped in the mail, um, and I've used it. It's fantastic. See, there we go. That's all I needed. Such to a from shining you. sponsor. A great, great. And the shirt, <laughs> the shirt, by the way, is the greatest thing. I'm ever. wearing it everywhere. <laughs> Does it run small? I, I, I washed it. I'm like, oh, this doesn't look good. Not really. I have not washed it. Yet. Not really it seems on a little me, tight. But my wife says I cannot wear it when I drop my daughter off at preschool. So yeah, that's that probably sense. not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, you're not Burt Kreischer, so I don't think you're going to get away with that. You kind of, I mean, you can pull it off, actually. You need to gain a lot of weight. I'm, I'm young enough. The other parents are a little older than me. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the youngest parent there that drops my daughter off at preschool. Hey, if they're older than you, that actually might be a prime time great spot endorsement. To sell it. Great yep. endorsement. Mm-hmm. Uh, but another thing that DMAC went on to, and I think it's where we'll, we'll finish the night tonight, is DMAC made another good point where he used (laughs) some words that I love. He's like, I would be mortified and shocked if Jeff Blaschel was the coach next season of this team. He used the word mortified, which I'm like, okay, DMAC, I would also be mortified if Blaschel was the coach next season. But he said- the first time he's really said something like that? um, No, he's alluded to it before. I think he's alluded to it on Twitter. That directly. We've talked about it a little bit with him. But yeah. that to to make that much of a that big of a statement, yes, that is the first time he's made that big of a statement where he says, "I would okay. be mortified 
and shocked if Jeff Blaschel was back next season. And I get it, and I agree. I would also be mortified and shocked because this team, even though the record is is better than last season, but still not good, this team, to me, developmentally-wise, has turned a corner. They have turned the corner from being all the players are not meshing well together, they're not doing anything, they're lagging behind, to you've got the two of, I'm going to say, two of the top three rookies in the league, in you've got one of the best rookie goaltenders in the league, Ned. Shout out for putting out a shutout against his in his old barn against his former team, which we're not even gonna have time to talk about tonight, but it was fucking phenomenal. Stood on his head Absolutely. again before the defense laid an egg on him the other day and hung him out to dry. Again. But you've got one of the top rookie goaltenders in the league. I think going forward, Ned, it's his first full season that he's played and nine nights out of 10, he's going to stand on his head for you and give you the best chance he can to win the game. And you've got Larkin, who's having his career year, his best year yet, point almost a point per game pace before he has to go have the surgery. And I think probably would have been a point per game, if not more, if he wouldn't have been injured the past couple weeks because you could tell he was hurt and the surgery shows it. This team, as a player base, has turned the corner with that core group. You have your core. You've got Verona, who you want a 50-goal scorer at some point. Could Verona be a 50-goal scorer at some point in his career? At least a 40-goal scorer? I think so. Yeah. Lucas Raymond, in his first season, having almost 25 goals right now, I think he'll hit 25 before the end of the season. I can see Lucas Raymond potentially being a 40-50-goal scorer. If you have two of those on your team, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, that's a not, not skill wise, but points wise of a McDavid and a dry sidle, right? Could be. Maybe, Could be. You're, maybe if you're, you're looking at the winger side of things, you're talking about a Panarin. Sure. Or better. I think, Which is, hey, I'll take that all day. Because that's what you know. I could see. You, you, I can see a Verona getting potentially to that level if he's healthy. Raymond, it's exceeding that. Yeah, you could, I could, you could see it going higher. I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself with with Raymond just yet, but the potential is there, and the fact that he did what he did with the roster that they've had, yeah. like, sky's the limit. And kudos to Blashel for giving him the opportunity to be on that top line consistently all season and not moving him. That is huge. Because he's blend, done the Blash Blender how many times this season, especially when injuries yep. hit him. But what did he not do? He did not take Lucas Raymond. I can't even think of an instance when he did off of Dylan Larkin's wing. He might have done it he moved. once. No, I don't, I don't think he did it at all. And the only he's time never taken been if Mo Sider off playing. the top pair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, those two were the most consistent pair on the team. Other than the defense, which even still you can't even say was a consistency because of injuries and, and the sore and the, the trade deadline. I don't think there's two guys that probably played together more than Larkin and Raymond up until this point. No, yeah, I mean, I, I can't think of a situation that they didn't play together other than maybe when Larkin didn't play or like a four on four situation where it was Larkin and Bertuzzi out there. But um, it was an, a great change of pace for what we've sort of seen or what we're typically used to seeing, doesn't matter if it's Blashill or any other coach, you let your top rookie stay with your top forward all year, sink or swim. Larkin, Larkin was putting up his points. Raymond wasn't always doing it, but it's because he'd be the third assist guy on the other with the other two actual ones hitting the score sheet. Or he's making that extra play in the corner, causing pressure, thus getting those guys over. He's making a defensive play to help them out. He has grown tremendously. Now you can kind of tell that the season's taken a toll on him because he's not, not used to the physicality and length of an NHL year. But shit, he has done well. I don't think he's missed a game. Neither is Cider. Yeah. And there's but not is, much more you can ask for. That is where we will give Blashell credit. Is not yeah. as important as development was to these two top rookies in the league. He left them where they were, and that's the that would have that's the best thing he could have done for them is leave them where they were. Now, I'm going to sidetrack us just slightly more by bringing up a ridiculous thing that I got off of Facebook the other day uh, no. before we go back into the coaching thing where we'll end the night. Okay. When we played the Rangers and um, 
Lafreniere deked Larkin out of his pants. Oh, which I'm going to blame Larkin's injury for it now because, hey, he had surgery. He wasn't feeling great. Um, it was just a bad. It was he tried as hard as he could. And that was a really good, really good for, move by Lafreniere. Coming back the other way on it. But yeah, laugh, laugh did what you would expect from a number one pick right there. What you hoped he would have done previously. But Gallant mm-hmm. hates rookies. That's besides fact. Um, someone told me that because they were they're like, oh, what a play by Lafreniere. You know, the one that the Red Wings got tr- cheated out of the draft lottery for. To which I responded, I'd pick Raymond over Lafreniere every day of the week now. And they said, no, what Raymond is doing now is probably the best he'll ever do. And that next year, just watch Lafreniere will take off. Yeah, I don't know about that. And he will be a much better player than Raymond. They said at his peak, Raymond's probably a 30 goal scorer. And I logged off of Facebook because I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. And... I'm I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, right? You you really think that at his peak, they're like, yeah, Lucas Raymond's probably just like a consistent 45 to 50 point guy. I'm like, he's doing more than that now. Why is Lafren Raymond's got more points in his first season than Lafreniere's got in both his seasons combined? Like, what but no, they, they would go back and they'd be like, no, I would take Lafreniere over Raymond. And I I'm absolutely not would not credit Lafreniere at all. The guy, the skill is there. The dude is good, but to openly say that, really, to make yourself look really, really dumb on purpose on a guy that has never played. I mean, he's played in international tournaments up to this point, but he's played on large sheets of ice and used to a European style of game, where Laugh grew up here in North America. You've got a guy that's coming into a brand new situation as ni- at 19 years old and is a perennial dominant Calder finalist. Like, he's a Calder finalist. He, he is a Calder <coughs> finalist right now. And I'm sorry, but wasn't Lafreniere like benched once this season? And last season. Yeah, and he, played on the fourth line. But it, but I mean, it's. I just, that is the one thing. And I had to bring it up because I wanted to see your reaction specifically. And Ryan, because whenever I bring up anything Facebook wise, it really gets you mad. Because <laughs> they're dumber than they're fucking so, dumb. This was, that was the dumbest thing that I had heard all week, almost to the dumb. point where I almost removed the person from the group because Dude, I was almost <laughs> like, you I'm saved gonna pick everyone up. so much time. You ever play The Sims? And you used to like pick up your Sims and throw them in the pool and then remove the ladder Their and they would the drown. Same. Yeah, um, because I couldn't get out. I almost did that to pick them up and put them outside of the group in the little garbage can area with all the other dumb people who with bad Fuck opinions. But um, back to what Dmax said, and and I agree to the point that uh, Blashell won't be your coach next season, and that'll be a thing people will rejoice about. They'll completely forget about their he dumb. Didn't stop there. He didn't stop on Blashell. He said the whole the entire coaching staff. Like, where does that stop? Does that stop on just the bench, or does it go past that? I would say that I would keep Alex Tange because Iserman hired Tange. And like I said, yeah. I don't think Tange has been given a hundred percent control of, of what he's supposed to be given control of. I think that's I, fair. I think Doug Huda should have been gone a long time ago. I don't know why he's still here. Um, he's what the longest coach now next to Blash, right? He's been here for what, four years, five years? Mm-hmm. And he's been in charge of um, our really, really, really shitty penalty kill and his defense. Oh, hmm. yeah. Two things that we're bad at. So I I would say, oh, Tyler raised his. What the fuck are you doing? Tyler raised his hand. Tyler, stop using Zoom shit. What do you want? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. OK. Um. I just want to touch on the Blash situation. You touch Blash all you want. What do you want? Okay. So my situ- my thing with the Blash situation is that he's gotten this team to a point of where they're ascending from the rebuild. I don't think Blash was ever supposed to be the coach that was going to be the coach after no. the rebuild or on the way up. I think he was just there for development, and I think he's done a tremendous job with development as 
player wise, um, I think he's done as good of a job as possible, but then management wise and um, decision making and stuff like that has been pathetic really to say the least. I, I think it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of different reasons behind it. Um, but at the end of the day, they, there's, there's no chance that he's back next year. There's no chance he's back next year. I would like to say it's less than 10%. I'm not going to say it's not. I would possible. say it's about 5%. Because right now, this, this offseason is the turning point. How can you sell to the fan base? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. How can mm-hmm. you sell to the fan base to basically bring him back again after another terrible season? You, you don't want opening day at LCA to be a boo fest because you're announcing him to the team, the, the, the crowd. No, yeah, they've no, already gone. started the fire Blashill chance. And yeah, um, no, bringing him back would just make that a, a million times worse. Mm-hmm. Bringing him back would make people do something that I don't think that they ever thought they would do. No, there's going to be a lot of stupid shit said like there no. already is. Cancel their season tickets? No, no, I'm not talking about that. For the first time, we would start to question Steve Eisenman on a decision that he made. I, I can see. I it. will agree. That would be the first time where people were like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't know about that." Well, I don't we've know always about that said decision. you can you can run the trust the Eiser plan, or as Dmax says, the wiser plan. The wiser plan line is really really cute until you get into next season yep. um, or until Iserman gives you a reason not to and bringing back Jeff Blaschel in your what will be next season will be what is fourth year as GM fourth um, is that fourth? oh 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 as GM I as thought you GM. meant yeah I think it's his fourth year as GM would be a a reason for me to put a loss in in the GM column for Iserman, which right now has, I would say, no true losses in it. I mean, he didn't. Re- he has not yeah. done anything yet for me that has said that has made me say that is a bad move. I think and, a lot of people at first question the Mo Sider um, pick, uh, but I don't think anyone said it was bad it was just confusing and everyone no, I think gave it a, a lot pass. of people were confused and i think at first frustrated well i think everyone gave it a pass initially because it was eiserman and they're like he must yeah. know something we don't and he knew and he something did. we didn't i would say one thing right now and i'm a patriots fan here living in new england i'm sorry continue um steve eiserman out of all the sports teams that i follow is the general manager or president that I trust the most out of all my teams. Now I follow the Red Sox, I follow the Wings, follow Michigan, and I follow the Patriots. I, I'm not an NBA guy, but you I trust more than Belichick. Yes, and I'll tell you why I trust him more than Belichick because Belichick is 70, and I think the game is starting to pass him by. Now I, I would say it's probably on par over the last 20 years of what it's been with Belichick with Eisenman because Steve built a great team in Tampa. He, he, he did a good job a and winner. it's not just the Stamkos and the Hedman. It's the Kucherov. It's the point. It's the Sorelli. It's the Joseph. It's the, the filler players, the trades that he's made. He's traded Martin St. Louis, one of the cornerstone Fail players Cavalier. of that franchise. And he got Ryan, Mc, uh, sorry, Ryan Callahan back. He got Ken Holland to trade the first round draft pick for oh, Kyle boy. Quincy. Oh boy. Well, I didn't think we were know, going down that road. Craig, <laughs> of all the fucking things we've talked about tonight, <laughs> you had to go there. I had to the to one do. thing that is gonna top all of the other bullshit. It's the trade of Kyle fucking <laughs> Quincy and for I have a first round pick, three which turned into that. Andre Vasilevsky, you son of a bitch. But who did that? <laughs> The guy we've got. See, so what the fuck are people mad about? It's still upsetting. 
No, I know. Well, that in it, in and of itself is upsetting. Yes, but why are people mad yeah, now? Yeah. Why are people mad? Because apparently they thought that this was going to be a playoff team this season. That's that. That is the only. That's the only explanation. Crazy ass assumption that I can make based on the reactions thus far is that they thought this team was going to be far better than they were. They showed it early on. I they can got- see where some of those random thoughts could come from, but they were n- completely misguided. And they knew yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Ryan, if you watch this team in depth, not just like, oh, yeah, I have the game on and, uh, you know, they're winning games. So, you know, uh, they must they must be playing good. That team at the beginning of the season that we saw, you can still tell that that team could not defend. No. You can still tell that that team was you going to figure that out on this night one. Exactly. That's exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. Up, that what, night, six to and, three and lost in overtime. Seven to six. Like right, hello. six to three in the third period. I think it was, and we were all there, and we were happy, and we thought that they, you know, they've turned the corner. They're over. Tampa Bay. Yeah, not to yeah, be. None of us were drunk whatsoever. Nope. No. No. But but the thing is, it's like you could tell at the beginning of the season that this team was not going to defend well enough. And unless they they got some crazy seasons out of players that weren't expected to have crazy seasons, they weren't going to be a playoff team. Now, I think, you know, me saying that they were going to be a fringe playoff team was maybe a little bit too much. Maybe I went a little bit too far. But, I mean, they're not that far off, I don't think. I mean, obviously, the the East this year is, is very unique where – um, you know, you have a situation where the eight playoff teams were basically set two months ago. Yeah. You don't see that in the NHL hardly ever. It usually comes down to the next, the last, you know, three weeks or month. So, I mean, that's an anomaly. But in, in most seasons, I think, you know, if they didn't have those crazy losing streaks and they didn't have those games where, you know, they're getting blown out, if they're, if those games that are 10 to 1 um, are, Two to one, or three to two, or four to three games. Oh, well, you're getting five points. to two. Who cares? Yeah, you're getting points. So, I mean, at the end, right now, they just they're on they're on the come, and people need to trust. Can we not me say that. God, didn't we talk about this? Did we talk That's, about this, Tyler? All, okay, fine. Can you they're never on say the, on the come again? <laughs> never, please. <laughs> they're on their it. way. Uh, they're. Uh, the cusp, the up and coming. Yes, yes. They're on the, on the brink. Ridiculous. On the brink. They're on the brink of greatness. Better. They're, also they're, better. Okay, so they're on the cusp of greatness. Thank they you. have someone leading them who you should trust. He's given you a reason to trust him. He, you should trust him. He's done this already. And so, I mean, you just have to be patient. And people don't like to be patient. That's how people are in sports. And that's how people are in life nowadays. They don't want to be patient. Where in this situation, rebuilds take time. Yep, absolutely. So. Um, but I think that's where we're going to end it tonight. I want to get you guys' final thoughts before we sign off. And I am going to start with Ryan. People that think Dylan Larkin, for one, isn't good enough to be on this team. And two, shouldn't be the captain. And I'm going to leave it at that. RD Ryan 33. Tyler. Yeah, final thoughts are I've bumped my situation for Jeff Blaschel to be gone to about 4% would be the Oh, you mean to be rem- to of be him to, retained? To be, yeah, to be retained. Okay. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think, like I said, there would be some backlash in the city. I think people would not be very happy. And again, what is this, his eighth year as the head coach of the team or sixth year as head coach of the team? Uh, this is year six, I believe. Yeah, it's it's time to move on. Seven, time maybe. This on. might it's... be year seven. There has been. Six I think it's years. year seven. Sixteen because... was his first year. Yeah, because he missed. He made the playoffs that first year, and then you know it's been hell since since then. But yep. Anyways, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Sildog ninety one. Uh, I'm going to say for my final thoughts, go check out our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com, search the Grindline podcast. Go subscribe to us. Our podcasts also get posted there. So if, you, you, if you're at YouTube more than your podcast platform of choice, you can go there and subscribe to us and get all our content there. I think we'll be doing probably a little bit more with YouTube than just our episodes too, eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, go there and subscribe there. If you are not subscribed to us on your podcast platform of choice, please toss us a sub. 
Please review us on Apple Podcasts if that's your thing. Go give us a nice little star rating. We would greatly appreciate it. It helps us get sponsors and it helps us retain sponsors. Again, please go to manscaped.com and use promo code GRINDLINE. Any order counts. If we get enough orders, again, full sponsorship, baby, and better Manscaped deals. So go there and use the promo code GRINDLINE to get 20% off your order. We also give a shout out to the Hockey Podcast Network uh, for hosting our podcast to Howie's Hockey Tape, where if you use a promo code GRINDLINE, you get 10% off your order. And to bring hockey back, where if you use that same promo code, you get 12% off your order. Uh, finally, we like to give a shout out to our merch shop, redbubble.com. Uh, search the GRINDLINE, you'll find our merch. And to Vintage Detroit, which is the best place to get your Detroit jerseys. Um, Tigers, it is Tiger time. It is baseball season in Detroit. The Tigers have looked good despite their injuries. So go there, get your Tigers gear. And uh, yeah, it's the best place to get it and uh, the best people to do it for you. But that's going to do it for us tonight. So for Ryan and Tyler, I'm Greg. You stay classy, Occupy Town.